Hello, welcome back. This is part two of Neural Networks Explained. In this video, I'm going to continue to explain forward propagation. And just to recap, we have uh, an input layer whose values come from some data. In our example, we are using the MNIST data set, which is uh, hand-drawn um, digits from zero to nine. And the amount of rows in that data set determines the amount of neurons uh, in the input layer. And then we generate random weights. These are some examples here uh, that are between the values of one, negative one and one. And we also have uh, biases for each of the neurons in the hidden layer. And that's set to one by default. Uh, so as you can see here, we have four neurons in the hidden layer and then four weights that represent each neuron. So for each each neuron in the input layer, they have a weight for each neuron in the hidden layer. All right, so yeah, just to recap. So if you recall, the number of neurons in the hidden layer is arbitrary, it, but there are, there are formulas that exist for determining the amount of hidden layers and the amount of neurons in that hidden layer. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to an article describing a formula, but do know that often one hidden layer is uh, gets the job done anyway we then use uh, these weights in the inputs we multiply them uh, with the dot product formula then we uh, as you see down here then we add the bias to the results to get our value for our uh, neurons in the hidden layer so that's our recap so uh, what i'm going to talk about next is what we call the activation function so before we finalize the value in the hidden layer so for each of the values in the neurons in the hidden layer we need to run them through this activation function there's a few different popular activation func functions that people use but we're going to talk about what is probably the most popular one most widely used one which is relu and that stands for rectified linear activation function and a fancy name but a very simple function it basically works like this if um, if the value is greater than zero we, re we return that value otherwise we return zero pretty darn easy um, this kind of demonstrates it right here uh, so in this instance for this neuron it was 62.88 since that's greater than zero we just return that value so that is the value that gets put into that neuron not too complicated so all right i'm going to go one slide further here note um, i've changed this value to two if you are following along with your uh, from the video before this was zero but i'm i changed it just because it's more interesting when you have a value that's not equal to zero i've also simplified this um, neural network so that there are just we're just going to work with like three inputs and four uh, hidden layer values and two outputs uh, and just and, and if you want to follow along we're going to I'm going to calculate all these values from here on out I also we this is very typical to do this you for these inputs so um, now that I'm going to run the calculations for this um, I want it to be as real as possible to what you would do in an actual neural network in an actual neural network you would find a way to compress these values to between zero and one and since we know that these inputs the the um, min and max range is between zero and 255 then you would just divide them by 255 to get a number between zero and one uh, and, and and that's what I did here so these are the values that we'll actually use for our inputs and, you, and you'll see this will um, uh, be of great use to us later for our output values um, anyway the so these are the values I'm going to use for our inputs and so I you see here I ran this through the dot product and ended up with uh, 1.2426 as our um, value for our first neuron in our hidden layer you can run the same for each of our uh, neurons in our hidden layer um, you know using the the weights corresponding to that neuron uh, and while I'm, I'm actually on that just so you're not confused when I get into the code part of this in a future video um, 
these this represents right here this these weights here if they're just transposed that's how you'll see them in python when we when we do that so i just want you to so you're not confused it's really the same thing we just kind of flipped it around um, and so this is uh these are the weights associated with this hidden neuron that gets you know um, the 0.23 is for this one the 0.45 is for this one the 0.12 so then to figure out the the value right here we'd use this row here kind of the same as using this column here that's all i just wanted you to, to see that and so you would run this dot product add the bias and then run it through the relu um, as it turns out all the values are above zero so um, these are the values that we get and so i just wanted you to uh, see that and so um, we have completed at this point our values for our hidden layer and so now we're going to talk about what we do from going from the hidden layer to the output i'll just note one thing though before i move on is that if if there were multiple hidden layers we would do the same thing in between each hidden layer that we did right here if it had the if there were another hidden layer of four neurons we would have a new set of weights for those neurons that we would use and get the dot product the add the bias and run it through relo the same thing if there if it was 10 neurons then there would be 10 weights um, for each for each of these right and so, so i just wanted to point that out but now we don't have that we just have the one uh, hidden layer so now we're going to the output and going to the output is slightly different than going from the input to the hidden or from hidden to hidden and so i want to just talk about that so the next step is to calculate the values for the output layer and so when going from the hidden layer to the output layer we do do the same dot product calculation so i'll kind of show that here we have a new set of weights uh, as i talked about we would have right and again this makes sense that we just have two rows here one for each of these but there's four weights in each row that correspond to uh, each of these here and so we would run our dot product just like we kind of did before you know using this as our value and then the associated weight right and then you know the same for this and its weight right here right and then we get we add our bias right here and we get the value then you would do the same thing for for this one here using these weights here and this is uh, what you get is 0 0.0312 so that is very similar to what we did going from the input to the hidden however there is um, one added thing that you're going to do here that is uh, different we're going to run a different activation function so we're going to use the softmax activation function and basically, I'll read what I have here. The softmax max activation function transforms the values in the output layer into probabilities. And we're going to use these probabilities to gauge how close our network was to predicting the desired outcome. And we didn't really talk about the desired outcome yet, but I'll just show you this right here as uh, actually this one here as an example so if we had like if we were actually doing this for real we would our neural network might look something similar to this but that would take way too much time to calculate the values for the purposes of this video so i compressed it but you would have all 784 neurons go into some hidden layer then coming out you would need to have 10 neurons in the output layer that represent each digit and there would be a label for each time you ran a column through and let's say the label um, was zero we would want to see we would hope that the neuron value for this one if our desired outcome was zero this one would be the highest like and the values are going to be percentages between zero and one and we would hope this would be like 0.9 something right to to represent that so i just want to point that out and that's what this gives us it gives us these those percentages and what this is is you it's basically um, we're raising Euler's number. If, if you don't know what that is, it's a um, the natural logarithm, but it's a 2.718. It goes on that number, but you can kind of round it to 2.718, and it uh, we raise that to the value of our neuron over 
the sum of all the values of our neurons, raising Eulers to the sum of all of them. And it'll probably be more clear as I show you uh, in here. So in, in Python, math.exp does that for us. It raises whatever we put in here, it raises Euler's numbers to that amount. And so uh, here's our example. We had calculated this previously, these numbers using the dot product and the bias. And so what we would do is like raise, do math.exp 2.384 over math.exp 2.384 plus our other neuron. If we had more neurons, obviously we, we would add them as well to this, but we only have two, so we only need to do that. And this gives us our value for that first neuron. Ran it for the second one as well, and this is the value for our second neuron. And so ultimately you would put those values in here now. So that's replacing what we had before. And our, so, and I didn't mention this yet, but our let's say our desired outcome was for this to be the one and not the zero. Obviously, our neural network is off because this was much higher and much closer to being one. And so, and that and that's the that's the whole point of our neural network. And is now we're going to have to do some work with this backwards propagation, which I'll do in the future in the next video to get this number to be closer to this. So we're going to have to adjust our weights and biases to help us figure that out. And so on that note, I'm going to stop here though, because that is kind of the completion of our forward propagation. And what we're going to do in the next video is see how we actually get an error value. That is kind of like how, what was the amount we were off from getting our desired outcome. So we, we calculate an error value. We'll do that in the next video. And then we use that value to adjust our weights and biases. All right, that's it. So let me know if you have any questions about the forward propagation, which we just did. Um, and uh, I'd be glad to answer those questions and we'll see you in the next video.